I was dead wrong about this game. I had Denver, the favorite, winning a close, low-scoring game. 43-8? to eight? Are you kidding me? So my big picture takeaway is that on a night that was made outdoors in New Jersey in February for Peyton Manning, almost 50 degrees at kickoff, and with today's rules, obviously favoring the offense to score nothing but point after point after point, that Seattle defense shocked me by making a case, making a statement, and we will debate this a little later in the show, that it should be the unit considered for all-time greatness because it didn't just dominate Peyton Manning and company. I thought it basically bullied Peyton Manning and company. But Stephen A., allow me also to say that I did not think that Peyton and company ever psychologically recovered from the first snap of the football game, which was an unforced error, a premature snap, as you well know, that went right over Peyton's head as he was attempting to change the first play at the line of scrimmage. That wasn't just Manny being Manny, as in Manny Ramirez, doing this all the time. He never does that. And from that point on, I thought Peyton Manning, who put up, obviously, the greatest regular season numbers we have ever seen from a quarterback, looked skittish and shell-shocked. Even the hint of pressure that he got forced that ugly duckling of an overthrow that went right to, to obviously, uh, Cam Chancellor. And then on the second interception, Averill just blew up Orlando Franklin, hit Peyton's arm, pick six going the other way. And to me, Seattle made sure that Peyton Manning starred in Duck Dynasty last night on the Super Bowl stage. This game was over by halftime. Stage is yours. <clears throat> Well, first of all, let me say this, Skip Bayless. Obviously, I was dead wrong because um, I thought that somehow, some way, Peyton Manning would be able uh, to figure them out. Uh, that simply wasn't the case. But, you know, we can engage in hyperbole. We can be insulting or whatever the case may be. It's just important to be factual. I'm dead serious with this. The Denver Broncos got punked yesterday in a Super Bowl on the world's biggest stage in sports. They got punked. They got embarrassed. They got stomped on. They got beat down um, in every phase of the game. They got outplayed. They got outmuscled. They got bullied. They got pushed around. They got outcoached where John Fox and Jack Del Rio, the, the, the so-called defensive coordinator for the Denver Broncos, he should be ashamed of himself too. They had this team ill-prepared to play. The opening snap uh, with, you know, with, Rand, with Manny Ramirez, uh, considering that name, but Manny Ramirez, along with Peyton Manning, he couldn't hear. Even the Denver Broncos fans got outperformed because before a point was scored, before uh, or immediately following kickoff, it was clear that this was a pro Seattle crowd. No, it wasn't the same noise that you hear in Seattle, but it was noisy nevertheless. And it was so noisy, in fact, that it was incredibly alarming because Troy Aikman astutely pointed out while commentating for the game that, even, that this is not your typical Super Bowl crowd where it feels neutral or anything like that. I mean, when you heard, they, they, think about this. They're at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey, about 3,000 miles from Seattle, Washington, and Peyton Manning Center could not hear his quarterback calling the play, making the call, because the crowd noise was that raucous. This is unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it in Super Bowl history, but that's what happened. And so for me, when I look at that, think about these sequences, Skip, and I'm talking about this is almost instantly. This is in the first minute of the game. You have Trenton Holiday comes out. He gets smashed at the 14th at the 14 yard line, opening kickoff. Peyton no. Manning, very first snap, all of a sudden snaps over his head. You've got a safety. And then after that, they get the ball again, and you've got Thomas coming over on a slant pattern. And who is he greeted by? None other than Cam Chancellor, who puts a hit on him. And all of a sudden, you watch everybody in, on Denver's offense. They're all soft. They all softened up from that moment. They were coming across the middle, looking every which way. They were scared to get popped. 
They had other stuff on their mind. That's why I use the word punk. Yes, Peyton Manning may have been uh, offended by the word embarrassed. It was an embarrassing performance. It was putrid. It was pathetic on a part of the offense. But Seattle's defense is just lethal, man. They are on another level. I cannot believe I was this wrong about how lethal and awesome they are. But I'm going to emphasize it again. The Denver Broncos did not just lose yesterday. They got punked, straight up punked, diminished, minimized. I mean, they had their hearts snatched out of their chest within the first three minutes of the game, and Seattle never looked back because Denver never looked forward. They were in survival mode. And obviously, we saw how that worked out for them. I'm glad you brought up the fans. I meant to. I did tweet immediately about it because, to me, East Rutherford sounded like East Seattle, New Jersey. And I'm going to assume, Stephen A., that with ticket prices plummeting because so many people feared how bad the weather was going to be, that a whole lot of 12th men, so to speak, a lot of Seattle fans who had come East, snapped up those tickets and I don't think Peyton and company were ready for the wall of noise that hit them as you say maybe not like it would in Seattle but I've been to a whole lot of Super Bowls dating back to Super Bowl uh, 10 I believe it was and I have never heard a, a pro crowd on a neutral field be that loud early in the game the way Seattle's was so the 12th man did travel <clears throat> And I think it also helped inspire a Seattle offense, Stephen A., because Russell Wilson, as usual, didn't put up a lot of flashy stats, just 206 yards passing, but he made key throw, as usual, after key throw, the two touchdown passes. And the stat of the night for me, offensively for Seattle, that's the first time in Super Bowl history that an offense gave up no turnovers and no sacks. Zero turnovers, zero sacks for the Seattle Seahawks. Well, when, when you're forcing four turnovers on the other side, I think it's going to be a route, and it was. And as I also tweeted early in the second half after Percy Harvin ran the second half kickoff, kickoff back to make it, what was it, 29 to nothing? 29. They should have let Bruno yeah. Mars come back out. <laughs> Bruno Mars should have come back out and played the rest of the second half because he was way better at halftime than the game we were forced to watch the rest of the way. No question about it. I'll tell you something else, Skip Bayless. You know, listen, when I look at these guys, it is unforgivable how John Fox, you got to remember, John Fox's signature is defense, even though he's a head coach in this league, all right? Now he's the coach. He's lost a Super Bowl with two different teams. But this man is about defense. Jack Del Rio is supposed to be about defense. And you know what Seattle's defense is going to bring to your offense. How can you be so thoroughly ill-prepared in a game of this magnitude? we got to remember, they didn't have a potent running game, a potent running attack yesterday. They pretty much neutralized Marshawn Lynch to some degree. But Percy Harvin looked like he had jets, like a jet backpack or something. <laughs> they couldn't stay with this man. They couldn't stay with this man. You look at Curse. You look at uh, uh, Golden Tate and these boys. They, didn't, they, they seemed as if they could do what they wanted. And in the meantime, the Denver Broncos, you don't even record a first down until about, two to, about three or four minutes into the second quarter, yeah. not even a first down. Yeah. This is just, I mean, they got beat They got beat down on an epic level. There is no category in which the Denver Broncos beat Seattle yesterday. Special teams, offense, defense, protecting the pass as opposed to, you know, I mean, listen, they, they didn't even blitz. <clears throat> they had pressure on Peyton Manning all day. They didn't even blitz. They didn't have to. Avril and these boys, they couldn't do it. Clemens and Avril couldn't do anything with them. Couldn't do anything with them. It's just embarrassing. Peyton Manning went from not being touched to being touched all night long. It was bad, man. So when we come back, we will head back out on the road. But this time it's for the NBA Finals. Skip Spurs versus Stephen A's Miami pick. The best moments from our time on the road is next.